one of the hottest trends in the furniture and cabinetry industry for the upcoming season are curved shapes and earthy tones. They've been slowly coming in since last one or two years or so, and according to industry experts, they're here to stay. Hello there, and welcome to this tutorial mini series where we will implement some of those trends by modeling a modern TV wall and coffee table. We'll start off with a curve to build our basic shape and then go on from there to model our different pieces and dive into some of the issues that might arise when modeling with curved shapes. We will then add some trendy textures and colors and finally we'll add some decorations to give the scene some life. So here we go. In part one of this series we'll look at modeling our room, setting up the scene and then modeling the basic bodies of our TV wall with the help of a curve object to give it a nice little curvature. So let's start with the room. We're in our empty blender scene and we're gonna shift a mesh add a cube. And before I do anything else we want to note that I'm working in millimeters. If we go under our scene properties and units we'll see that I'm working in millimeters. By default blender is set to meters so just keep that in mind if you follow along um, either you have to convert it or just switch over to millimeters so before i do anything else with my cube here i'm going to tab into edit mode and with everything selected i'm going to hit gz1000 and when i move it in edit mode the object origin which is that little dot within the center of the 3D cursor. You can see it right there if I deselect everything, that little blue dot there. The object origin doesn't move. If I were to move the object in object mode, the origin moves with it. Now that the origin is basically on the bottom of the room, whenever I scale my cube, it'll only scale up and outwards and not downwards anymore which is what I want. Let's size this cube fairly large. Let's imagine we're in, a, in an open floor space um, where the living room or maybe the dining room is one big room. So let's make this 8,500 on the X axis and 6,500 on the Y and Z we go 2,650. As a good rule, whenever you model and you change the size in object mode, apply the scale. You can see the scale is completely out of whack. It should be 111. It helps with texturing and modifiers and all kinds of stuff. So let's hit Control A and apply the scale. Now I want to separate all this in separate pieces but before I do that because we're going to be looking at the inside of our cube basically we got to invert or flip the normals of the faces because right now they're facing outwards and we want to have them facing inwards. We can check this up here if we go under, under overlays, face orientation and click this. Right now you don't see anything on my side here. And that's because I have it set to be transparent whenever I look at the positive normals. If we go under edit preferences and under themes, Let's find the 3D viewport and face orientation front. So if I bring the alpha all the way up to 1 or somewhere around the 0.7 mark, this is what you see by default. And if you go inside the cube, you'll see the red, which is a big red flag. <laughs> so personally, when modeling, I tend to have face orientation toggled on all the time, so I immediately see if there is an issue, but I don't want to look at blue faces all the time. So I just set the alpha on the front orientation to zero, and that way, only if there's something wrong, I see a big red face and I know, ooh, fix that. So let's go into face select mode and select everything by hitting A and then we're gonna go Alt N and flip. And now you can see everything is red on the outside 
which means the normals are actually facing inwards, which is what we want, because we're going to be working on the inside of the room. So now we can separate everything. Go back into face select, hit the top, and then hit P, separate by selection. And then we're going to do that same thing for each of the four walls. I just like to have it that way. So now I can get individual parts out of the way whenever I want. While I go through each of them and hide them, I'll also rename them right away. So this, for example, will be my ceiling. It just helps with staying organized, which is a good habit to start right away, even especially if you're early on in your Blender journey. You want to start staying organized all the time because later on, when your scenes get more complex and you have hundreds of objects in the scenes and, and lots and lots of collections, uh, you want to know what everything is and where everything is. So it's a good habit to have to just stay organized and name everything appropriately. That being said, I'm going to call my collection room. And now I'm going to select each wall individually and rename that too. So that will be my wall front. So now I know which object is exactly what, and I know I want the back out of the way and I want the right side out of the way. Because so I will place my, my TV wall in this area here. For now though, I'm gonna bring my back wall back for a minute. I'm just gonna make a couple of openings here. So on the left wall, I'm gonna go into Edge Select, I'm gonna hit Control R and place a loop cut right down the middle. Right click to cancel that. And then in this half here, I'm gonna do Control R again. And I'm gonna add three loop cuts, scrolling up with the mouse wheel, left click, and right click to cancel the movement so now i'm gonna control b bevel them and give them two segments i'm just gonna bring it up like this and if i go into vertex select i can actually gy move these over gy Move this over a little and I'm going to select these faces and scale them on the Y axis a little more. And then I can even control X dissolve this edge and then I'm going to control R over this edge. Scroll up once to add two loop cuts, cancel the movement. I'm going to hit S Z to scale it up on the Z axis. I'm going to make this appear like there is three big windows without actually putting windows in there because it will not be visible in the camera it's just for reflection purposes so i'm gonna face select these three faces and i'm gonna extrude them by about 180 on the negative side insert them ever so slightly and x to delete the faces Back in object mode i'm going to do something similar over here one in the middle and i'm going to scale those two on the x-axis put two horizontal ones in there just like on the other ones s z scale that up i'm going to move that up a little so the top is roughly the same doesn't have to be a hundred percent because like i say it won't be visible and it's just for reflection purposes so now i'm going to grab this face extrude 180 on the negative side inset it a little bit and delete the face these are just to get some light in from the outside later on 
So we have our basic room set up and I'm gonna get this wall out of the way for the time being. So now we'll get to the fun part where we actually do our curved shape cabinetry. I'm gonna add a new collection here. I'm gonna call this TV wall. I tried a couple methods to get the curvature onto the furniture and the best method I found to be working was by using a NURBS curve and I'll show you why. So if I shift A, add a NURBS curve, I'm going to go into x-ray mode so we can see better. If you look at it, it already has a really nice curvature rather than a Bezier curve which has, which has that squiggly uh, shape where we would have to adjust the vertices and rotate them and bring them in shape. With this NURBS curve, we already have basically the shape we want. We just have to size it to what we want. So first let's rotate it in place. I'm gonna hit RX 90 and RY 90 minus. Let's go into front view. And the thing about NURBS curves is they don't have the vertices right on the curve, they have a hull. So if we go into edit mode, you can see four control points, but the curve is actually here. So the first thing what we're gonna change is that we have the endpoints of our curve actually on these control points. I'm gonna do this under the data and active spline, we're gonna to toggle endpoint U. And now you can see the curve actually goes from endpoint to endpoint. So now in object mode, we can give it the height we want. I wanna give it two meters. And for now, I'm going to just gonna move it roughly in place, somewhere over here. And I wanna make sure that my endpoint is on one of the thicker lines of the grid. I'm going to use the grid as a visual aid. Because I want to have about 20 centimeters of inset curvature. So now that I have my, my endpoints set on this line and I have the height set to two meters, I can tab into edit mode. And I'm just going to grab these two control points and I'm going to hit GX and move it over until I see that the curve is on the second thicker line of the grid. If you look up here, we're looking at 10 centimeters. That's 10 centimeters by 10 centimeters square on the thicker lines. So we want to have 10 and 20. So it doesn't have to be too perfect, but if you're looking at something like this, that should be good. And now we can maybe squish the, the curve a little together by hitting S, Z, and squeezing them. That makes the curve a little flatter without losing any of the depth. So that is a really nice curvature for our cabinetry. We wanna, don't wanna go too crazy, otherwise it would be unrealistic in terms of hinges or opening systems. I think that works pretty well. Now, we don't want to build our cabinetry out of that curve. So we need to convert it to a mesh. But before we do that, we should look at the resolution of our curve. Because so right now we're set to 12. And if I were to duplicate this now, move it on the Y, and then right click and convert to mesh, and then check it in edit mode, we can see that we have all these big segments in there. And if we were to look at it on a close up shot, we might still see some of the jagged edges on there, which is not what we want. So I'm gonna delete this again and I'm going back to our curve object and I'm gonna just double the resolution. So that way it'll be a lot smoother without the need for a subdivision surface modifier. So now that we have the resolution and the shape, now we can convert it to a mesh, but I'm gonna make a duplicate first. So Shift D, leave that where it is. And the second one, I'm going to call Shape Builder. 
and I'm going to hit M, New Collection, Tools. So that way I can preserve one of the shape builders or one of the shapes to build our, our curvature in case I need it later on. And I can just dis disable that collection so it's not in the way. So this one here, I'm just going to move it a little back. And now I'm going to right click it and convert to mesh. So now if I go into vertex select, you can see we have the double amount of vertices and those segments are a lot smaller. That way you won't see any, any jagged edges. So let's stay in it. vertex select and hit A to select everything. And then we're going to hit E, X, 800. And again, we're going to hit A to select everything. E, Y, 450. And just like that, we have our tower. And we're going to rename it to tower. Again, stay organized. Okay, so we're going to activate our face snapping and hit GY. And while hovering over this wall, hold the control button that activates the snapping. And we'll bring it over. And then we can move it GX a little to this side. Keep in mind to leave a little bit of space. Because I imagine I would have sliding doors. So I want to be able to slide that door open. And one last thing I want to do here is I want to right click and set origin to geometry. So next thing, we're going to move this up GZ 50. And later we're going to add a base to it. But first let's get the sideboard on here. So with the tower selected, I'm going to go into edge select mode and select the bottom edge here. I'm going to shift S cursor to edge or cursor to select it. So there I'm going to in object mode, shift A, add an empty. I'm going to use plain axis. And I'm going to GX that 1000. So I'm going to use this as a mirror object. First and foremost, then I only have to model one side and the other side is already done for me. And the other reason is I want to have the sideboard be uh, 2000 millimeters on the base. And this mirror object will give me just that. I'm going to call this mirror. So now I want to have a 450 millimeter sideboard ish. So let's go into front, front view, tab into X ray mode or wireframe mode. And I'm going to grab my my measure tool here and roughly go up from this line here roughly go up 450 so we'll have one line at 460 and we have one line at 430 rather inconvenient let's just work with 430 then fair enough so this is our line Go into vertex select. So this is where we want to have the sideboard. I'm going to grab everything that's underneath and hit shift D. Cancel the movement. P. Separate the selection. And we'll go back into object mode. And then we're going to just select this one and call this sideboard. And we're actually going to make a couple sub collections. One we're going to call tower. I'm going to move the tower in there. And one I'm going to call sideboard. Move the sideboard and the mirror object in there. So now I'm going to grab my sideboard. And under this little wrench icon here, I'm in the modifier section, I'm going to add modifier generate mirror. And right now nothing happens because it's going from the object origin, which is somewhere here. So I'm just going to take this little eyedropper and select my mirror object. So now I have this face, this section of faces mirrored over. 
and I want to connect them and I'm going to activate clipping. That way, when I squish them together right in the middle, they're going to just stay connected and don't overlap. I'll just demonstrate this here quickly. I want to vertex select, grabbing all these E, X. So now you see it's overlapping. Right? It just keeps going and going and going. So we don't want that. So I'm going to turn on clipping. And then again, E, X. And now I can just smash them together in the middle. So now I'm just going to take all the front faces here, not the top face. And I'm going to G, X, not G, Y, 50 them a little to the front. Just to break up the design a little bit. So now what we need is a base for it. So let's hit Shift A, Mesh Cube. I'm actually going to drag this into the main TV wall collection. I'm going to call this Base. And remember we lifted these up, or we lifted the tower up by 50 millimeters. So we know that the base needs to be 50 millimeters high. So Z will be 50 millimeters. And this would typically build, be built out of three quarter inch material or 19 millimeter material. So on the Y axis, we go 19 millimeters. And I still have face snapping toggled. So I'm going to go G Y snap it to this face. So it's right at the front. I'm also going to G Z it onto the floor move it over a bit. So now I want to bring it backwards another 20 millimeters. So GY20. And I'm going to go back into front view, wireframe mode and vertex select. I'm going to take these vertices here. I'm going to extrude them by 19. And then I'm going to GX them over to roughly about here. And I'm just going to take the top ones and GX them further. So our curvature and this angle roughly line up. Something like that should be good. And furthermore, I can also go switch over to vertex snapping, select all of these, bring them there, and then bring them back about 40 millimeters. And that way I have the same distance to the side as I will have to the front. So let's do the same thing on the other side. Extrude them by 19. And then I'm gonna, because I have vertex snapping still selected, I'm gonna go GX, snap them over, and then GX 40, this time minus. And here I'm just gonna take the bottom ones and move them over so I have roughly the same angle. Okay. Again, apply the scale and double check that on all the other ones. I didn't do it again. Yes, it happens. So get used to it. Always apply the scale when modeling stuff like this. It's really important. If you wanted to, you could also apply the rotation in this case because this will be the rotation that is the standard for those so we could apply the rotation and for the baseboard we can also set the origin to the geometry now you'll notice it's over here and that's because this half of the geometry is mirrored over so it's not real geometry if you were to tap into a vertex select you see that it's actually not geometry you could fake it by activating on cage, but the actual ge geometry is just this half. That's why the origin will be over here. So with the scale applied here, I'm going to add a bevel modifier. And out of the box, it's always set to 100 millimeters. I don't know why. Way too big for anything. So we're gonna set it to two millimeters and four segments. And I'm gonna shade it smooth. Now, you might notice a little bit of a, a shading issue that some parts are a little darker. 
and that is because the bevel modifier tries to average out the surfaces and the normals. So because we have the radius here, and then we transition over to a flat surface, it still tries to kind of average out the, the vertex normals, and that's why that face looks a little bent. And we can remedy that by going under shading and activating harden normals. And you probably see this little difference here. So one more thing we got to do on the base is we're going to go into face select. Let's go into local view quickly on the back side here. Take these two faces. Back out of local view. And then with face select, uh, face snapping toggled, E, Y, hover over that face and extrude it backwards. So now we have the basic block out modeled. Now we can start building the sides and extruding faces inwards. So let's start with the tower and go into edge select. And I want to make this out of 25 millimeter material. So I'm going to control R, make a loop cut here, bring it all the way over and then hit GX25. And I'm going to do the same thing for the other side, GX25, this time minus. And then I want to have 25 millimeters here too. So let's toggle on our edge length. And right now we can see it's 28 millimeters. So let's all select this edge loop and hit GG to edge slide. And now we can slide along the edges. And if I hold down shift, I can do it at very slow increments and do it until I have this edge at 25 millimeters. I'm going to do the same thing up here. GG, hold shift, and move it along the edge until I hit 25. Now, the next thing I want to do is I want to have a shelf bottom here and two more shelf bottoms in between here. The first shelf bottom though, I want to have so that it lines up with the sideboard so that the drawer fronts that I want to have here later line up and the doors are slightly above the surface. So now we can take this edge loop here, control B to bevel, give it two segments. Well, this is a chaos there. I'm just gonna turn the edge length off for the time being. So control B to bevel with two segments and I'm gonna put 9.5 in. And that should give me 19 millimeters here because it bevels from the middle. So it'll go, it'll go 9.5 and 9.5 and then we have 19. So now I need to determine where I'm going to put two more shelves in here so that I have three segments of doors that have the same size. So I'm going to grab my measurement tool here and hover over this edge and go up pretty straight. So one, six, one five, six, five. Let's bring out a calculator and type in the one, six, five. You can read numbers. That's a great advantage. One, five, six, five. <laughs> so there's going to be a two millimeter reveal on each door. I want to have a little bit more here just because of it would be sliding across the surface there. So I'm going to have two, four, six, eight millimeters. I'm going to take these off, minus eight. I'm going to have three doors. So I'm going to divide that by three. And I end up with 519. So what I need now is 519 straight up. 
plus two millimeters to start off with, and that will get us pretty much exactly to this line. To right there. So let's grab this edge, control B, 9.5. And then we're gonna do the same thing one more time. We can delete this one. And from the middle of this, we're gonna go up 519, which brings us to this line. This is just what we're gonna use if it's a couple of millimeters out. In this particular case, it's not that important. We could always edge slide them into place where we need them. Okay. So now we can go into face select. I'm gonna get the wall left out of the way too. And now I'm gonna select the faces. I'm holding control down. So it takes the shortest path and I'm gonna shift select the next one and again, hold control. Shift select, control. So now that I have all these faces selected, I'm gonna hit E to extrude 430 minus. And there's our tower. And if we look at the front, the center of this shelf bottom is right at the line where the sideboard is, which is perfect. So now we want to shade it smooth and it's going to look very funky. So first thing we're going to add a bevel modifier at two millimeters in four, four segments. I'm going to harden the normals and that already looks a lot better. So now we can go over to our sideboard and one thing we haven't done yet is save our file. So let's do that quickly. Control S, save as, or you might have to go under file, save as, and I'm gonna call it Curve TV Wall Record. So now if something goes wrong, we at least have a save that we can go back to. So let's move on to our sideboard. And if we look at it from the front, the way I wanna do it is I wanna have basically five compartments in here grab my annotation tool. I want to have a shelf bottom here. I want to have a shelf bottom there. And then I want to have an open compartment right here. And unlike my lines, I want to have it straight. Holy moly. I cannot draw with a mouse. Good thing those are not just visual aids. Anyway, this is what we want to do. So luckily, thanks to our mirror modifier, we only have to do that on one side which makes it a lot easier and faster. So let's go into edit mode. And first we're gonna have to do basically the same thing we did on the, on the tower. We're gonna have to do the sides and the top and bottom, and then we're gonna do the inside. So first I'm gonna add another loop cut here, bring this all the way over like we did before, and then GX 25. And in fact, let's uh, go into edge mode and toggle the edge length on one more time. I use that actually frequently. So what you can do is you can right click it and then where it says remove from quick favorites, for you it probably sets add to quick favorites. So when you toggle that, you can just hit the Q button and then there's your quick favorites and there I can turn it on and off on the fly without always having to go up to the menu here, which is very handy. So we're at 28.9, so let's go select this edge loop, GG like we did before, and slide this up. So we have 25, and we're gonna do the same thing here, GG. There's 25. And then I wanna have a 19 millimeter wall here and there. So I'm going to make another edge loop here. 
And this is why I do it on the fly, because right now it's really annoying to have the edge length showing. So I'm going to undo that and just turn that off quickly. Because I want to mention that when you hit Control R and add the loop cut, by default, it averages out between the two sides. So between the straight side and the curved side in this case. We move over a little. You can see the closer I get to the curved side, the more it mimics that curve. So what we can do is we can hit E to even it. And now it would have that perfect curvature from the left side all the way, no matter how far we go over until we hit the wall. Or we hit F to flip it and it mimics the other side. But before I do anything here, before I move it around, what I want to do is turn off clipping for the time being. Otherwise, if I move it over all the way to the middle, I can't get it back because it will stick to the center point of the mirror. So now that with that being turned off, I can hit G, G once again, smash it all the way over there and then hit G, X, 9.5 minus. If I go into object mode, I see that the height of my object is not correct because I have the rotation not applied. So if I apply my rotation now, then I can see the height is 433. So 433, bring the, back the calculator. 433 divided by 2 makes 216.5. So let's go back into edge select and see where we would have 216-ish. That would be 210 or that would be 238. So let's grab the 210. Like the whole edge loop, control B to bevel 9.5 as we did before. And then we can GG that up a little if we want to. That should be fine. So now I need another couple of loop cuts here. I'm going to hit E to even and flip it over. And I want to have it, I can eyeball it. It doesn't have to be too precise. I want to have a nice little box in the middle. Toggle on the edge length again. We're at 293 currently. Let's bring this back up. GG. So we have a 19 mil or well, nine and a half mil there already. So let's bring this to 191. That will, will, will have approximately 200 millimeters on the inside there. GX, bring it over, GX 19 minus. And then we have to decide where we want the box to end. Let's go one, two, three, go to this edge. Gonna hit and make another edge loop there and bring it till I have 19 millimeters here. And same thing from here. Do it here. Hold shift and it's gonna be a little slower for you. So now we can start extruding our faces inwards. Start with our box here. So we're gonna go from our just freshly created faces and edges. And we're just gonna extrude them by 480 on the negative. And we're gonna deal with these faces in a second here. And then we're gonna make our two big compartments here. We're in front select and we're going to go to there. Shift select everything here and all of these and then extrude 480 negative. Now these all, all these phases here 
their remnants because we have the mirror modifier and the clipping activated. Clipping should be activated at least. So if we just deactivate the mirror modifier for a second, we can just hit C to circle select and select all these faces. Make sure that these ones are deselected first. So again, C select. And X delete those faces. That way we don't have any internal faces, which would be weird when we start adding a bevel modifier and all those things. But there's our basic body. Now we can just shift select our tower, hit control C and copy selected modifiers. And I want to copy the bevel. If I just copy all the modifiers, it deletes the mirror modifier and that's not what I want. So I just want this bevel modifier. That way I don't have to set it up again. And we can see it's applied everywhere nicely. And I just noticed that I've made a mistake here because I wanted to have the wall. So, control C. All the way until this point, because I do not want these pieces here. Control box select these to deselect them. And then E 480 minus. Again, select everything C to circle select all these faces X and delete the faces and now that actually looks like what I want so one more time shift select the tower control C copy selected modifiers and select the bevel Now that actually looks like what I wanted to have. So that concludes part one of this mini series. And in the next part, we'll be looking at adding fronts to our sideboard and to our tower and tackle some of the issues that can arise when working with curved surfaces like we have here. So stay tuned for that one and I'll see you there. Thanks for watching.